Welcome everybody to another episode of Enlightened Masculinity. My name is Akash Shinsi, and I am Akash Shinsi of the Rising Suns, where we do work in terms of designing your avatar and really working on your masculinity in and of itself. I'm joined today with a special guest by the name of James Hyman. James Hyman is a shaman that's been practicing for over 35 years and really is a not only a visionary in the field, but also a, a pioneer in it, really bringing back and living uh, the, the, the life of a shaman and, and, and bringing this healing work to others. Today, we are um, missing Yogi Chris, PhD. He is flying right now back from Hollywood. The three of us actually just got back from the Evolution of Consciousness 2020 convention produced by Vince Kelvin. And wow, absolutely, absolutely incredible, incredible time there. James, I want to, we, we, in the past episode, we were talking a little bit about how you kind of got into shamanism and, and, and things of this nature. I want to spend this time really talking about masculinity and the importance of it and, and yeah, how it's good. related to, to the work that, that you've done, not only for yourself, but for, for other gentlemen and, and, and women. Um, let's start off with, how would you define enlightened masculinity? Uh, well, I would define enlightened masculinity. In order to get to enlightened masculinity, what you need to work on is your femininity. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Tell me more about this. That's, that's, that's not something I would, I would have originally think of. I know. It's like, it goes against everybody's thought, but really that's the truth because we all know how to be guys. We all know how to be males. We know, all know how to be like, you know, to flex our muscles and pound our chest. Okay. Mm. And uh, what we really, it takes a lot of courage in, in, to go in, into the internal energy and work with the, uh, the receptive is the feminine. The intuitive is the feminine. The spontaneous is the feminine, mm. okay? Um, the male is calculating, and it comes up with a plan, an agenda, and a strategy, okay? And I got goals all planned out and so forth. And the feminine is more like a wispy in the moment. Mm. Now, it doesn't need, necessarily mean male or female, so you don't want to be confused. In fact, if you... A lot of American women, a lot of what's going on with women is they're very well seated in the masculine, in their masculine. Mm. And so it comes off sometimes is like they're, they're, they're very difficult to deal with because they're not being as yielding and receptive and feminine as we would like them to be. Mm. So again, my senses and my experience is uh, you're not going to lose your masculine. Okay. The masculine is, it's, I find it's like, if I'm working with my masculine, it's, it's in, it's just an internal sense of grounding in my body and my beingness and my power, in my voice, uh, in my determination in my anger and my rage. Okay. And my ability to yield come. That's, that's where I brought the feminine in as the, to balance all those male energies out. And, uh, to be nurturing, uh, to, uh, to be empathetic. Okay. So then what happens is you become a whole person. And I believe, uh, the true male is a whole person. I know there's a guy out there named, uh, David Dady. He wrote a book called the superior man. And I took mm -hmm. issue with that right away because here we are, we have to be superior to something. You know, and I'm going, what does that mean to be the superior man? It's like, to me, once you get so well seated in your own being, there's no question what you are. You just are you. So, James, that's an and interesting, I believe that, that's, that's a really interesting point. And, and I, some, one thing that I've even speaking from personal experience is that in today's day and age, it's not every man particularly is comfortable with their own skin and being comfortable in their own skin. And I think this is part of the process of, of growing in and of itself. But can you right. talk a little bit more about that? Okay, well, here's a key. To be comfortable in your own skin ultimately means you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable in your own skin. Mm. Because as soon as you start approaching a woman, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to be uncomfortable. And if you're not comfortable... If you're not okay with being uncomfortable, you'll just shy away. It'll happen the same thing at any place where you have to step up a little bit more than you're used to stepping up. If, you're, if you allow the, 
the slightest bit of discomfort to dissuade you, then you'll back off. So you have to become comfortable. You have to become comfortable with being uncomfortable, not necessarily all the time. That would be a drag. But to be able to work with opposing energies. So to me, again, that's a male energy. Um, women, I think, have a hard time doing that, especially in relationship. When, when the conversation gets intense, they, I, I don't feel that they have the same capacity to be uncomfortable. Mm. Okay. And so, you know, I mean, this is really, you know, the, the real test shows up when the male female energy, when you're in a relationship and you have sexual charge going on and it gets to the place where the male female is in, you know, really opposing energies. Okay. How do you deal as a man? How do you deal with that? How do you deal with surrendering? I mean, maybe in this stage of, of our evolution, surrendering is the ultimate male energy. Hmm. in order to create world peace. Now, James, this okay. is interesting. One of the things that you've, you've repeatedly said, not only in this episode, but in the past one, is this concept of the work. Will you talk about what that really means? It's something I've heard many a times, but I've never okay. necessarily understood fully. There's only one work on this planet, and that's the work of the evolution of the self into the highest possible being that you can be, which is a God-man. And at that stage, the ego is no longer there. And, and the ego, but has to, ego has to say, I am on this path. I am a man on this path. And nothing, nothing can take me off this path except my death. And even my death can't take me off this path because I will find it in the next lifetime. Wow. Wow. That is so, <laughs> that's so powerful and, and, and invigorating. And that's, that's speaking for myself. That's something I've continued to navigate in and, and understand is it's easy to get lost in in certain paths that are not necessarily the, your path but I, I found that kind of getting back to yourself becoming realizing who you are is kind of realigning yourself with that path so i'm sure you've done always, a lot of and it's always changing it's always changing i mean i'm being challenged today as much as i've ever been challenged mm. in terms of you know uh making adjustments in my ego self so that i can just be a better man mm. what does it mean to be a better okay. man in that sense or to be this God? Well, I, well, the God thing, I can't see. The ego can't. The ego goes, ooh, I want to do that. <laughs> I want to be the God man. <laughs> so right away, you know, that energy goes, well, that's why you don't, you're, you're not privy to it. That is, that's the evolution itself. That's what we surrender to. When I said the ultimate is the surrendering. It's like surrendering to, I guess, a higher power. I wouldn't call it a higher power necessarily from a religious standpoint. But from the higher, higher, higher power that, you know, we will all die. And if we live long enough, we'll all have to face old age. And I know speaking to men who are in their 20s and 30s, that makes no sense. Believe me, it <laughs> make, it's, not supposed, it's not supposed to make any sense. It's not. It's like a seed that's in there. Because if you do happen to be fortunate enough to get on a true path and wake up in this lifetime, Okay, then you'll remember these seeds that you have left for yourself along the way, not just in this lifetime, but you might have left things for yourself from another lifetime in this lifetime to remind you to wake up. Wake up. Remember that when you meet this person or remember when this thing happens, okay, it's, it's a sign for you to wake up and remember who you really are and what you're here to do. That's so incredible, James. One of the things that I experienced specifically working with you was, uh, was this, this technique that you'll use when you're working with someone in terms of pressing on the stomach, pressing on the, on the heart. And then um, obviously you always ask to, if, if you have permission, but will you talk a little bit about this? I'm, if, if I'm understanding correctly, this is the kind of the technology of deep emotional release and, and quantum theta healing. Will you kind of describe a little bit of right. how it works? Okay, so that, this is what happened right? when, I, when I became a healer. I first was doing like shiatsu massage and different types of body work. And then uh, about uh, 30 years ago, I met a man who taught me this particular technique. And when he worked on me and he did the first release on me, I felt this immediate like breakthrough of something I had never felt, through, felt before. Mm. And I went, oh, my God. This is, this, this is the work that I came here to do because it allowed me to work at a level with other people now that I was used to working with myself. 
Like mm. I remember I told you that in the first 15 years of my shamanic work, when I would do the vision work, I would always get to this place of deep, deep emotional energy would come up. And it was all the pain from my life. It was all the pain about life itself. And I would let it come to the surface. And, as it, and I didn't understand then, but what it was doing was moving right through the chakras. And so when I would start weeping, when I actually would start weeping, uh, the, the throat chakra would open up and then the energy would hit the third eye. And then I would literally have visions. And that's where the vision came from. Hmm. So that I would be weeping and I would have these visions about the world and what the world was about and why, why, why war? Why all this insanity? Why, what was this, all this technology that was coming? And I would have visions of things, okay? And I would go, and I would also understand it from like, uh, like a, understanding from a previous shamanic lifetime that we're just, it's just, it's just the world we're living in. We think this is the modern world and it's linear going to the future, but we just showed up here and we're going to leave and we're not going to show back up in this world. We're only here one time. We got one ticket and we may show back up again in another lifetime, but it's going to be another ticket for another movie. Hmm. And who knows? Uh, I lost you. Hold on a second. Yeah, you're, I think you're back now, but. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> um, so I was now able to work with people at the same level that I worked with myself, and I could take people into deep emotional release, and I could query the conscious mind by asking those penetrating questions that I ask. And, I, and then once my intuition starts opening up, Questions will come to me specifically about you. And, uh, and so I'm able to actually go in and do this work of adjusting a person's emotional field so that they actually dump all the stuff out of the subconscious mind as well as the physical body. And then I can guide them through into like vision work because now the subconscious mind interface is open. And by towards the end of that session, that's the quantum theta work, where I can literally take them, your, you into the quantum interface of where you're holding the vision for your life. Like, what is it you really want to do? Hmm. And oftentimes, people for the first time will recognize, oh, wow, I never saw that before. And it clears up so much, you know. And then, you know, then your life becomes your path. Your life is your path. James, and that's, so it's really that's... exciting. Yeah, and this is one of the things I've experienced working with you is that because we've worked, I think, three or four times together, but every, and it's been about six months in succession or periods of time, but in those, in those periods of time, <laughs> so much has changed. My whole life has changed. In, in so much sense. each time it changes. It's amazing. It's and amazing. So it's incredible because one of the things that I've, I've experienced is that it's, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm navigating paths that I've never navigated before, but I'm feeling more comfortable doing it than ever before, which is, it doesn't make sense, but at the same time, it makes complete sense. So one of the questions right. I, had, I had for you, James, is that, and, and this is kind of a little separate, related, but a little separate, is that I've noticed um, that you have an incredible laugh and, and that you'll laugh in, in periods that to others may seem like it doesn't make sense, but I know there's something there. Can you speak about this? Because I've, I've noticed uh, not only necessarily in, in um, shamanic work, but I've even in uh, just... The, the power of laughter is so, so incredible in terms of releasing, from my understanding, releasing emotion and, and tension. Can you, can you talk about this and, and what on, goes on? Laughter, laughter, is the best, laughter is the best medicine. That literally, uh, when I'm working with people on the table, there's two powerful responses. One is deep weeping, and the other is hysterical laughter, where they're literally out of control. And I will keep the laughter moving. And there, there's so much heat that goes on in the body that sometimes they'll start sweating, they'll start crying, and they, the laughter, and they can't stop. And it's literally the entire nervous system, like resetting its entire self and, and bringing itself into harmony and balance. So I, I know, I guess, like, I'm pretty, in certain ways, uninhibited. And I guess one of the ways I'm uninhibited is, is my laugh. I love it. it. I really laugh. love it. <laughs> <laughs> and... But it's true. Even in my own own reality, I'm I'm constantly endeavoring to take 
things that seem distorted or negative and twisting them so that I can see the, the humor in it. Mm. You know, oftentimes I'll just literally be in meditation. I'm, I'm meditating, you know, I'm in presence because my eyes are open and I'll be meditating and a thought will come or an, a, a, an awareness will come uh, and I'll see all of a sudden the truth behind something and I'll just all of a sudden crack up. Mm. And uh, it, to me, that's the release. That's when the psyche, the ego, it gets it, you know, uh, even in relationship to, you know, things. Now, sometimes things are, oh, let me explain something else. So this, I don't want to pass this on, but this just made me think of this. If you look at your life and you have a problem, you have, you have to find a solution set to solve a problem. If you just see your life as a process, then all you have to do is stay present, show up, and be in the flow. Hmm. But once the mind says, oh, that's a problem, then you literally are stuck with it as a problem until you come up with a solution set. Whereas if you just see everything as a process, even as painful as it may be sometimes, and you just see it as a process and you kind of just write it out, okay, then everything, again, all these, it's like much more of, of a, so that's the feminine. Mm. of kind of allowing and allowing life to just kind of ease the flow, mm. okay? But then again, remember, it really is this balance between, you know, being in the flow and then taking action, because action is the only real power. Yeah. I mean, visions are powerful. Visions are powerful, but only if you take action at the right time, at the right juncture. You know, otherwise, it just sort of drifts off. That's interesting, because as I've been exploring vision more and, and really applying it to, because I've been applying it for my own business, for my own life it's, as well, and and it's I've found taking from taking almost different visions. So I'll, as you mentioned, there'll be different. We can have visions all throughout our our whole. From my understanding, at least, we can have visions all throughout our day. And there's certain times where our visions may be clearer, yep. and then there's other times where it may be a bit tougher to access vision, or it's less clear. Um, but I but I found that I'll get certain pieces of my vision, or the way I've been constructing it more and more is that. I'll take a piece of one vision, I'll take another one and take another one and blend that together into something new. Um, so uh, just an aside. That's, okay, but that's, that's, the power, that, that's the power of flexibility and of spontaneity and of creative, creative flow. Mm. Okay. James, so let me ask you, you know, this. What, what, from your work, the work that you've done over the past 40, 45 years now, as you've traveled and as your path has changed so many times, what is it that you've seen has been the kind of the constant that's brought you back to this type of work and, 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 and working with others in this way? Good question. Uh, I, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's like, no, I mean, it really, it, when I think about it, I mean, it's just how I relate to people in the world, you know, it's hard for me to be socially in a situation where I'm just kind of prone to chit chat. I can do chit chat for about a minute and a half and then I have to get the conversation <laughs> real. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Have to talk about something that's, you know, that's, you know, powerful, you know, um, I don't like to talk about myself, you know, but I'm like, this is fun. Okay. But if I'm sitting in a situation and somebody says, what do you do? I'm actually pretty reticent, you know, um, which is interesting. You know, I, I don't know if maybe I should show up even more, you know, something I can look at, but the, to me, it's a never ending story. Uh, to me, I do believe that if you really wake up into consciousness in this lifetime and you wake up into conscious awareness, that's the only thing you can take with you out of here. Okay. Nothing else goes with you. Your story stays here. Your story goes nowhere. Your physical belongings, they leave, you're going to leave them to everybody else. Your body, you know, it'll turn to shit. Uh, your, your, the pictures of your famous people you've been with on the wall, they'll continue to collect dust. Mm. Okay. Nothing that you were as an ego personality goes with you. The only thing that goes with you 
is that which is beyond the ego personality, which is pure, unadulterated, clear awareness of now, which is really the only true spiritual practice that anyone can ever have because all there really is to meditate on is the present moment. You can close your eyes and you can do mental exercises. They're very relaxing and they're very nice. But to sit in reality and just study reality in the present moment, there's nothing else that can bring you the results you're really looking for in terms of higher consciousness. That's so, so rich, James. So incredibly rich. One of the things that I've continued to, to, to learn and observe is there's kind of a stickiness. to And, and one of the things that you'll, you'll talk about with us and in, in, in the work that we've done specifically with Vince is, is bringing awareness to the, the, it's almost like this white noise sound. Uh, it's like, shh. And I realize, or I'll, I'll feel, and I was talking about this, I think in a past episode with Yogi Chris, is that it's from this like shh that the thoughts will originate. So then all of a sudden, I'll, with my eyes are open or my eyes are closed, I'll start seeing something or I'll start noticing the texture to something. I'll start uh, maybe even tasting depending um, on these things. So there's a, yeah. like, I, I like to yeah. call a stickiness to, to the mind almost because all of a sudden, then your mind gets caught on that and it loses that shh. Like that white. Yeah, it loses it. It's back. It's it's back. But see, this is the beauty of it. The beauty of it is, is there's no all right one way, all right the other way. It's the flow of what's happening. It's really almost like a like an infinity sign where you you have thoughts, then you come back into present awareness, then you're gonna have another thought, and that one of these thoughts you may grab and actually actualize it, and the next thing you know, it's taking your whole life and a whole new journey. Wow. Wow. That is okay, so here's, a, here's even a better one. Here's a better one for you. You see a woman, you see a girl, you're attracted to her and you don't do anything and you walk off. That's it. Or you walk over to her and you start a conversation. And the next thing you know, you have her number. And the next thing you know, she goes out on a date with you. And the next thing you know, you're together. And the next thing you know, 15 years later, 20 years later, you have a family and own a home and a business. That's life, man. That's what life, that's what, that's what this is. That's what's been going on for eons. That's the power of being a man mm. to show up, to show up for life. And to, it sounds like to create it as well, because there's a choice in that moment. There's a choice for a man to be, I'm going to go for this and I'm going to actualize this or not. It, it, it sounds like whether it be conscious or unconscious, correct? Well, yeah, actually, now, so I'll, 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 I'll tell you one story because it happened, you know, probably about, it happened a long time ago, but I had already been kind of on the road for a while. And I was a confirmed bachelor. You know, I was definitely into pick up and confirmed bachelor. Mm. And women were like, you know, part of the journey. Mm. Okay. And all of a sudden I was doing some medicine work with a group of people, powerful group of people. And uh, during the medicine journey itself, uh, I had a vision and a, and a spirit came to me, a, a female goddess spirit came to me. And she showed me my life with a family and without a family or with a child and without a child and without a child I had all these powers I could do all these spiritual things and you know yogic powers and blah 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 mm -hmm. but my heart was my heart was empty and the other was you know the other all my worst fears were confirmed I had to give up all this stuff and sacrifice all this and so forth but there was this fullness here and I realized why my life wasn't working was because I wasn't showing up for life. And in that moment, I saw the truth. And I saw the truth, and it's only for me that I saw the truth. But I saw the truth for me in that moment that I had to, in order for life to give me what I wanted, I had to be willing to show up and give back to life. So as a man, in my dream, in my dreaming, I can dream all these wondrous things that I can do. I could climb a mountain, I could build a city, I could build a bridge, I could build, build things. But the only thing that is a true, and this was came to me as a truth in terms of the feminine, because we, we started that conversation off tonight about that. To show up for the, for the planet and be willing to make the sacrifices of man, whatever that means, lose my family, sacrifice everything, but to just show up and be willing to, to give back to me, that is the greatest shamanic uh, gesture I could have made in this lifetime. 
Now, when you say give back to the, to, to the world, what, what is that exactly that you're saying? Is it that saying, I mean, I guess it sounds, sounds as giving up, maybe potentially a family or is, well, is it what, this what it was, was in, in, this, in this medicine journey, I was in a state of ecstasy. I was in a state of pure bliss. Mm-hmm. And I was, looked at my life and I looked at the, the only thing that I could say that I actually had was my spiritual path. Mm. But I was so deeply involved and committed to it for what it was that I realized that was what this life was about for me. And so the, the spirit, this woman said to me, she says, well, if it's so great, why wouldn't you pass it on to somebody else? The ability to be in this body, to be in this lifetime, to be in America, and to be able to be on a shamanic path and be free, to be a you know a child of the '60s and have followed you know that course of, of energy, all right. And uh, and but what what was shown to me was is my nature wasn't suited to be like uh, I I needed to fulfill myself by making that sacrifice of giving life back to the mother earth. Mm. Mm. That's what it was. It was life back to the mother earth because I c- c- claimed that to, to have this life, to be given this life so that I could be on the spiritual journey was sacred. So I said, well, if it's so sacred, are you willing to do the work so somebody else can have the same privilege? Mm. And in that moment, I said yes. So I said yes to life. That's it's, that's it's been hell ever, and it's and it's been hell ever since. <laughs> <laughs> this is so so Man. incredible, just <laughs> mind blowing on so many levels. Really, Jay. It's I'm I'm Man, honored. raising a kid. The whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Honored, truly honored to have had the experience yeah. to interview you and tap into all of the experiences that you've had. Because as I've, as I've, as we continue to do these interviews, it's so incredible. Like you mentioned, everybody has a different life experience, and to be able to tap into that and extract yeah. what wisdom can we take from this this person's life experience and apply it maybe to our own or share it with others. There's just to me, in some senses, that's that's doing the work itself is spreading the message with others. So. I genuinely, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you so much for taking some time out today to, to speak with us. This is great, man. Again, uh, you, for any, any listeners who are interested in, in checking you out, what would be the best way to work with you or get in touch with you? Give me a call because I do, I do, you know, we can do this work over the phone. The quantum theta work is really energetic work in, in quantum space. The number is 805-302-8448. 805-302-8448. Eight four four eight, really, awesome. and uh, so we work with anything, anything and everything. Excellent. And James, any last words you want to leave our listeners with before we close out? Um, just know that this is really this is a great planet. It's a great time to be alive. There's gonna be great changes on the planet, you know. And they in in the in the moment to moment reality, things may look like it, it's all coming to it, you know to it's, it's crashing on, on the shores of time and space, but to know that this is, this is the energy. This is the, the awakening. This is the awakening that, that was promised. It's, this is the awakening. And this is what it's taking for the planet to actually wake up and to be, to be really, to be a young man at this time, to be in your twenties and your thirties and, and whatnot. And to, to have the opportunity to understand, to, to bring in the spiritual awakening uh, into your life uh, it enhances everything that you do. Whatever success you have in your life, in order to really enjoy your success, you have to really be present to it. You have to be in the moment. You have to be, you know, really connected at the heart with your success and your well-being through gratitude and through sharing with others. Thank you. Thank you again, James, so much. For, for our All listeners, right, check out the Enlightened Masculinity Facebook group. Amazing content. And if you enjoy this podcast, like, comment, subscribe. There's really an incredible amount of content that we continue to put out on a week-to-week basis. Thank you. Thank you, James. And All right, Akash. Be well, man. Namaste.